Welcome, Nora. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, I'm thrilled to be here. I've got a little thank you up here um, to the organizers of this Veg Fest. Can we just give everybody a round of applause? And this is the first year. And it's been a wonderful event, so I'm thrilled to be here. Um, so just I want to just give you a little introduction, tell you who I am, um, and then we'll get into Activism 101 and why we should be talking about that. So I, one of like the main uh, form of activism that I do right now is I run a summer camp for teen activists called Yay Camp. So if you know any 12 to 17 year olds who are interested in activism and social change, send them our way. Um, I have some flyers up here and we've got a table inside. Um, if you want to know more about that. But I started Yay Camp because for the last uh, almost 15 years, I've been pretty obsessed with activism. And I, you, can, um, you can see I'm the, I'm the one with the funny face in this picture. Um, I, I love that, that the camp for me is an opportunity to be silly and to build community and to, to um, work together collaborating with other young activists. But it also, for me, is also um, something that I see as a really serious and pressing issue because, seriously, the animals need our help. And a lot of folks maybe are here you know, at the VegFest to learn about the benefits of going vegetarian. Obviously, it's better for your health, it's better for the environment, it's better for animals. For me, animals were what initially inspired me to go vegan in, two, in uh, 1998. So I've been at this for a while, and for me, when I first found out what was happening to animals, I felt like this should be on the cover of every newspaper. This should be the lead story on the news every day. Like everybody needs to know about this because everyone, every time they eat, uh, is contributing to this or has the chance not to. And yet it was like a well-kept secret, especially in 1998. Um, I kind of stumbled across the information in a class that I actually almost didn't go to that day. I almost skipped out on that class. And who knows if I ever you know, would have come across this or my life might have taken a whole different direction. So I started to really look at, well, what can I do to help get the word out? Because the word is not just getting out on its own. I want to ask you guys, so I, I'm guessing that the people who are choosing to be in a, a workshop or a talk about activism, are n you're not just, um, this isn't the first time you've can thought about vegetarianism, you're not just looking into this. You guys are people who are probably pretty dedicated. So I want to just ask, raise your hand if you found out about vegetarianism or you decided to go veg or change your diet based on somebody else's activism, maybe, meaning somebody told you, somebody passed you a leaflet, somebody made a video that they uploaded on social media, some, somebody did something to get on the news, somebody wrote an article. So a lot of us. A lot of us, and in a lot of cases, the way we find out about things is from commercials. I mean, that's how McDonald's gets their word out, and we don't have a billion dollars to spend like McDonald's does. So that's where we come in, trying to get the word out about this. So the, the crux of what we're going to be talking about is, as, activism, in, as activists, is a way to kind of clone ourselves um, as people who are making a difference for animals. Um, you, there's all different numbers about how many animals you save when you go vegetarian, and it's kind of impossible to really calculate that. It's just a complex number, so there, I've seen 100 as a number used, so just to use that because it's easy. If you go going vegetarian or going vegan, save 100 animals a year, if you just pass someone a leaflet and they go vegetarian or vegan, then that saves, for our numbers sake, for argument's sake, 100 animals a year just from you handing out a leaflet. You just doubled your impact. Amazing. Or you have a conversation with someone who then considers their diet in a way they haven't before. And you've now tripled your impact, right? I mean, it's an incredible thing to be able to look at the ways that we can impact other people. And sometimes it's not so easy. There can be a lot of challenges. So um, we're going to look at some of those today. So there's so many things that you can do, both big and small, as activists to, to get the word out and to make a difference. This is a really little thing um, that I love. One of our campers just wrote on her shoes. You probably can't read this, but it says she has a little dog on one side, and it says, why well, love one? And on the other shoe, there's a little pig, and it says, but eat the other. And she just drew those on her shoes. and. 
walking around all day, people probably ask her, like, hey, what do your shoes say? And that's a conversation starter. So something as little as that can get someone to think about their diet in a way that they haven't before. So here's the cliff notes. This is like, if you need to leave early, and like you can only get one thing out of this, I want you to just get this sentiment. Don't be a jerk. And I wrote this in the jerkiest way that I could, like all caps and bold and italics and red and with a lot of exclamation points. Um, so I know I personally feel really passionate about this. I'm, I admit, completely obsessed with this issue. Um, I've worked uh, I've worked for a number of different animal advocacy groups over the years. I've handed out, I can't even guess how many leaflets, tabled at countless events, given I don't know how many talks. I'm obsessed with this issue. And when I first started out, I was a jerk. That's my polite way of describing my behavior. I was so passionate about this that I just was like, wanting to shake everyone and be like, you have to stop eating meat. Animals are getting tortured. You're a horrible person if you don't stop and you know it was kind of underneath like a real like a lot of anger a lot of judgmentalism um, a lot of judgment um, a lot of just um, really <sighs> difficult and unpleasant emotions that part of part of which was just me um, projecting that onto people as I was like really confronting and coming to grips with the sadness of the state of our world and what's happening to animals and the environment and you know, to make nuggets that aren't even healthy for us, right? I mean, there's a lot of emotions to deal with around that. And so I think one of the key things that we as activists for a more compassionate world need to look at, how can we communicate this message of compassion in a compassionate way, in a way that doesn't undermine our message? Because sadly, vegans and vegetarians have gotten, in some, in some cases, a reputation for being angry or judgmental and you know, I can own that I contributed to that and I work really, uh, have worked really hard to not be that kind of angry vegan anymore. Um, and it takes something. So I wanna now look at really as, as we wanna, as we approach interactions with, with other people, um, whether it's kind of on a big picture or one-on-one, -on -one, look at putting ourselves in other people's shoes because most of us were probably not raised vegetarian or vegan. And even if we were, we got to a point where we then were able to make decisions on our own, right? And most people didn't come to this decision overnight. You maybe came, became aware of how animals were treated or you saw a video or you thought about this at one point. And most people, maybe the people in this room consider are not a representative sample of humanity, but most people don't just go vegan 100% overnight right away. That's just the reality is that most people it doesn't work like that. So we've got to find ways to get, put ourselves in those, those folks' shoes and create an, a, an environment and an interaction that's going to help move them in the, what we, you know, for us is really kind of the right direction, even if they don't go vegan overnight. So just to kind of put yourself in people's shoes, if we want to think like, why aren't people already vegetarian? And as activists, we want to really think about this to be able to address it. So first of all, for a lot of people, they've never even thought about it. I mean, for me growing up, that just never occurred to me to be vegetarian. I mean, that's just kind of the most basic level, right? In some cases, they just don't know the reasons to go vegetarian. Maybe they've, you know, just, it's, they don't know how animals are treated, never thought about, the, you know, the, what does the drought have to do with eating meat? That's just, they don't know the facts. They may even have misconceptions about it. You know, they think that they need to eat meat or dairy or eggs to get certain nutrients, right? Maybe they don't know uh, how delicious vegan food is, right? They just think, you know, their stereotypes are just eating, you know, salad or celery or something, right? I mean, if once you've been vegan for a while, if you, you know, explore the different options, you realize, oh my God, this is amazing food. But a lot of people don't realize that, and that can be, you know, really kind of a non-starter for people. Just, just being totally realistic, it's a lot more convenient to eat meat in a lot of cases. You're at your family's house, and grandma cooks meat, you know, or your husband, want your, your wife, your mom, your whoever, you know, or all your friends go to the drive-in, you know, or go to 
uh, you know, want to go out to dinner at some place that doesn't have a lot of vegetarian options, or a lot of times school cafeterias don't have good veg options. So in a lot of cases, it's just more convenient. In some cases, they just don't even know what else to cook, right? Like that's, people are used to eating certain foods and that's just what they know to eat, right? Everyone they know eats meat, so maybe they're concerned that like this is, people are gonna judge them or they're gonna be different, they're gonna stand out, you know, no one, you know, most people don't want to feel like they're, they're different from their community or they're kind of putting themselves out there or taking a risk. I mean, just the reality is a habit. Nobody likes, most people don't really want to change their habits. Changing habits to take something, you know. Um, at, at Yay Camp, a quick a little, little anecdote, uh, one of the things that we do, um, don't tell anybody if you are going to tell somebody who goes to Yay Camp, it's a little surprise, but one of the things that we do is we ask people to practice during the week brushing their teeth with their non-dominant hand. So if they normally brush their teeth with their right hand, just each time they brush their teeth, just practice try to, and try to remember to brush your teeth with your left hand. And if you've never done this, it's actually quite difficult unless you're pretty ambidextrous, which I'm not. And just to, it actually requires thinking about it. It requires like some muscle memory. It requires just like, you know, something that's so simple, you know, normally just brush your teeth, becomes complicated to do it with your other hand. And in some ways, that's kind of what we're asking people to do, to turn something that's really habitual, you can do it half asleep with your eyes closed, and you now have to think about it, and you have to remember, and you have to, you know, put some effort into something that you've never really put effort into before. And then just, duh, they like the taste of meat, or dairy, dairy or eggs, right? So that's just, these are just some of the ones that I came up with. There's probably more, but when you look at all of this, in some ways, it's kind of amazing that anybody goes vegetarian or vegan because there's a lot stacked against making that change, right? So I, I'm saying all of this just because when we're having conversations or when we're considering you know, ways that we can approach making a difference, we want to just keep these things in mind, that there are a lot of barriers towards people making change. And in fact, there's research within um, like market research and advertising. They've found that it's pretty common that it takes about six, to six or seven exposures to get someone to change their behavior. And that could be something, that's, that can be very simple behavior, like to buy Cheerios instead of Rice Krispies. Might take that many exposures to get you to see a new movie that you've never heard about that's coming out next month, you might need to see six commercials for you to be like, okay, I'm gonna go to that movie. It takes something to like, kind of penetrate someone's brain and to get them to then take an action. And we're, we're asking them to make a pretty big, take a pretty big action, to like change your whole diet. That's a, a lot to ask from someone. So I'm saying all of this Kind of, um, these are things that I think would have helped me when I was in my like jerk activist phase of just trying to put myself in somebody else's shoes of like there's a lot involved in getting someone to change their diet and sometimes when people respond, um, well raise your hand if you've ever talked to somebody about this and they've given you kind of a, what seems like a ridiculous response like oh but what if you were on a desert island or what about these teeth or don't lions eat zebras? And you're like, what does that have to do with anything? When you're at Safeway, you can still buy veggie burgers. I don't get it, right? But so um, I think that in a lot of cases, those types of almost irrational responses come from people not wanting to address the, and say honestly what was going on for them, right? So, um, so I, gotta, I gotta move a little bit so that I can see this better. So um, I told you I went through a bit of an angry activist phase, and um, unfortunately, there are some key things that I tried on your behalf that I can tell you don't work. So I want to just nip them in the bud if you haven't tried these strategies yet, uh, or if you were considering trying them. So things that unfortunately don't work is making people feel guilty, telling them that they're a horrible person for eating meat demanding people go 100% vegan immediately or else they're a terrible person for eating meat, I don't know, but that like you must do this all at once kind of energy. 
um, in a lot of cases I feel doesn't work because a lot of people, if they look at it as a black or white, like either I'm going 100% vegan tomorrow and never eating meat, dairy, or eggs ever again for the rest of my life, or I keep eating meat seven days a week and continue kind of not thinking about this, a lot of people are going to do the nothing rather than the all. So we want to move people in the direction of reducing their consumption. Um, being a condescending, judgmental martyr, complaining about how hard it is or that nobody cares, trying to make people feel sorry for you. I definitely tried that. I'm like, oh, there's nothing vegan here for me to eat. That doesn't make someone be like, wow, maybe I should go vegan too then, <laughs> right? Ultimately, it's still kind of trying to make people feel guilty. Like, oh, wow, this restaurant, they're horrible people like me because we eat meat, right? It's, it's really not a winning strategy. Um, and then doing nothing or giving up, like, well, I'm just, what difference can I make? That doesn't work either. So we're gonna look at some things that can help people to act that, that I think actually work. So here's a few strategies. Um, so first thing, and these are just a few ways that I've come up with to inspire people to change their diet. So we're not trying to make people feel guilty. We're not trying to lecture people or being annoying. We're trying to inspire people to think about things in a way that maybe they haven't thought of before to get them to take action. So the first is just basic providing people with helpful information about the impact of their food choices. So you see that each of the things, the, these strategies are, are things that I've come up with as, as ways to combat the reasons that people eat meat, right? They've never thought about it. They have, don't know the information. So just like handing someone a leaflet is a way to make them think about it because they're like, oh, I have this in my hands. Okay, well, huh. So all of a sudden it's like, okay, now I have to confront. I've never thought about this before. Now I'm thinking about it. Um, so that's, and, and providing them with actual information that they maybe have never considered before can really go a long way. So there's different ways that this can look. I've chosen a couple of different examples of things from our campers, but so one of our campers um, in Connecticut started a school club. So if any of you are students, uh, either at a high school or, or even middle school or college level, that's a great thing to do is to start a club. It's a great way to get people to think about things that they haven't thought about before. If you're not that age, there's all kinds of other things that you can do to get the word out. So here's another thing that our students do, but um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Farm Sanctuary. Every year, Farm Sanctuary has their walk for farm animals. And so a bunch of our campers got together and participated in this walk. It's also a fundraiser. So part of that is just a way for people to start thinking about you know, animals, what they've never maybe thought of before. So these are just some really simple things, passing out flyers, having conversations, having a bumper sticker on your car, a lot of the t-shirts that you guys are wearing. It's just, those are perfect conversation starters to get someone to be like, oh, what does your shirt say? Oh, what does that mean? Oh, huh. Okay, now they're thinking about it in a way that addresses just the very basic, most superficial thing of they've never even thought about it, right? So a second way to inspire people to change their diet is just introducing friends to amazing vegan food. I mean, I think for a lot of people, it just comes down to they think that they're going to have to eat nothing but lettuce or celery or carrots. I mean, that's just, there's, I, people are becoming more and more informed of what vegan food is, but at the end of the day, people are used to eating the food that they're used to eating and they don't want to change their food choices. So, you know, there's no memorization of statistics needed when you just give someone some brownies and they're amazing and then they're like, oh, these are vegan? Wow. Right? And you bring someone to, or, you know, your favorite veg restaurant or invite someone over for dinner and they realize, oh, this tastes really good. You don't even need to say anything. But they just get to see like, wow, this is that's really good. There you go. So you can really look at that as activism. A third area is making it easier for people to be veg. So remember I was talking about how it's less convenient and that's a real issue. You know, you could try to get people to recycle, but if there's no recycle bin, then you know, only a few of us are the type to put your can in your bag and walk 12 blocks until you find the recycle bin. Like most people aren't gonna do that. So they're trying to convince them to recycle, but then if there's no bins, then you know, you're making your job a lot harder. So making vegan eating a lot more accessible is a great thing that you can do. So one thing, ooh, that was loud. One thing that I love to do is, first of all, supporting businesses and restaurants that have a lot of vegan options, whether it's all vegan restaurants or restaurants that aren't even vegetarian but are making an effort to have something vegan on the menu. And, you know, so obviously going there and supporting with your dollars 
But I love giving, like if you ever use Yelp, raise your hand if you use Yelp ever. A lot of people, yeah. Um, Facebook also has um, different um, restaurants will have Facebook pages where you can write a review, give us our number of stars. So this is like a, such a simple thing, but you can give like a vegan restaurant five stars and just write like, oh, this place is amazing, you know, try the whatever. And you can give a restaurant that doesn't have anything vegan one star and say, I was gonna eat at this place, but there's nothing vegan. Because these restaurants care about their reviews. And if they start seeing a lot of people who are like, oh, there's nothing vegan and they're giving, you know, getting bad reviews, it's like, okay, I could order, I could add a veggie burger to the menu. It's really not that big of a deal, right? So when you go into restaurants, just asking for it. People can't read our minds, right, that you wanted something vegan on the menu. A lot of times you might go into a restaurant and see that they don't have something vegan or vegetarian and walk out. In that case, I like to actually say, hey, do you guys have anything vegan on the menu? You know, and, and if they say no, I'll say, oh, well, you know, it'd be great if you added something. I would love to, to eat here. Bye. You know, so that they get that they're losing business that way. And that, you know, we're, we're as much as possible making it easier for people to eat veg. Also, there's a really awesome campaign. Um, um, so you're maybe familiar with Meatless Mondays, the idea of Meatless Mondays, but that's something um, the Humane, Humane Society of the U.S., which has a booth in the, in the other room, um, has been working really successfully on getting Meatless Mondays in schools. And there's entire school districts, LA Unified, um, Detroit School District, Miami, Dallas, like entire school districts that serve thousands of meals per day are implementing Meatless Mondays. And there's, you know, they're getting more vegan options in their cafeterias. So again, it's like trying to get someone to recycle, but there's no bins. It's like, I mean, really, what we got, you know, you got to make it easier for people. And that's not going to happen just by happenstance. It happens by activism. Uh, and so the last area is being someone that people want to emulate. So uh, it kind of, this is kind of the opposite of, oh, there's nothing vegan here that I can eat. Nobody cares. So hard. Like people don't want to join that club, right? They don't want that for themselves. They want it. To, they want something that they can emulate and aspire to. So I chose three of the more famous vegans in the world, and I found like these bright, glowing pictures. So I'm not suggesting that we all go and be, you know, uh, go be Ellen and go be, you know, media moguls and such. But you can see just how, um, you know, people want to. People look up, you know, have role models, people that they look up to, and the fact that Ellen is vegan. That's huge. Like anytime someone watches Ellen, there's a chance that she's going to say something, you know, related to that. And that then gives people, you know, a, a way to kind of debunk, you know, this, this kind of stereotype of, you know, the, either the kind of tree hugger um, in Birkenstocks kind of, you know, um, stereotype, which if you don't, if that doesn't speak to you, then it's like, oh, I'm not that kind of person, right? So that may not, it, it may seem like, well, I'm not going to be the or vegetarian because I'm not the type of person who does that because I have my view of what type of person that is, right? So a lot of times I think just having people see that like there's some huge, not just celebrities, but um, but people who are really successful and that we may emulate, uh, we may you know be inspired by or want to emulate. Um, it gives a lot of credibility. So I think, you know, in a lot of, a lot of cases, kind of mentioning, you know, that, that some celebrity that maybe, maybe somebody that you know loves some certain celebrity that is vegan or vegetarian, you know, that could be something that inspires them to just even think about it differently. And remember I said it takes a bunch of exposures to convince someone to make a change. So maybe the first exposure is Oh, okay, um, we're not ready for this one yet. So maybe the first exposure is, um, you know, seeing some story on the news and they're like, ah, that's, I don't want to look at that graphic, you know, undercover investigation. And so they like, don't think about it. And then they have a conversation with you and they're like, oh God, yeah, I don't want to think about this. Uh, and then they see Ellen and they're like, oh, Ellen's vegan. Huh. Russell Simmons has a new book about being vegan. Wow. Oh. Okay, didn't know that. And then there's the next exposure, and they go to like 
the office holiday party and there's you know veggie burgers and they try it and they're like oh that's good huh okay and we start kind of chipping the way i like to think about it is we're kind of chipping away at people's resistance you know all of those reasons you know it's like first they never thought about it and then it's like but what if where do i get enough protein where would i eat what would i do on thanksgiving what if i was on a desert island what if this what if my boyfriend's not vegetarian what if i go to a wedding and they don't have a vegetarian but what if the you know, just all of the like things you know but lions and zebras and you know all of the things right there's a there's a lot of resistance that ultimately i think comes down to people don't want to just eat salad right i think it's sort of like all of those are some kind of like you know just some cognitive dissonance and some defensiveness around just not wanting to admit that they don't want to just eat salad because that's what they think vegan food may be you know so when we can present ourselves and again i'm not saying we should all be you know go try and be beyonce good luck with that but um but just you know people that others want to be around right so kind of the opposite of like oh it's so hard you know to, so that you're like oh my god this food's so good you know even if i sometimes do that when i go out to eat with somebody who's not vegetarian if i get you know if my meal is like you know not that great I would, I would never complain about it you know if there's just this one crappy option and i get it i know i used to um and i didn't think that that was effective so now i'm like oh this veggie burger is really good you know and they're like oh this hamburger is actually not that good and i was like you know well look at this you know the, you know so there's um it's just a lot of framing and how do you frame this in a way where people are like think it's cool i mean it seems really superficial like animals are being tortured that seems like reason enough but it, it takes a lot to get people to change their their minds and then their actions and to not just change their actions once but like we want people to eat veg every day <laughs> like that's taking a lot of actions right and it's you know in our society there's so much hidden you know you, there's they don't show you a little video about how your food was produced every time you go to the store right there's no um you know there's an ingredients list but there's not you know a, a suffering list right there's no picture of the gestation crate or the slaughterhouse and so people don't think about it so it takes a lot to kind of cement this so as much as we can make it cool as much as we can make it so that people want to get to it um want you know are inspired by this the better so here's some core things that I think can really help to develop yourself as an activist. And so our whole curriculum at Yay Camp is built on developing four core areas. So the first one is knowledge. So becoming knowledgeable, and hopefully you did some of this today, and you can do, get, develop a ton of knowledge from just the internet, the Google, um, but all the organizations that are here, knowledge about the benefits and also knowledge about people's concerns, which is some of what I talked about, right? To just really listen for like, what are the concerns that might be getting in people's way and being able to address those and knowing how to respond to frequently asked questions. Like, don't plants feel pain? You know, I've heard that a hundred times and I want to just roll my eyes, but that's actually a question. So I want to have a legitimate response to that question because rolling my eyes is probably not going to inspire them to change their diet, right? So the second is skills. So that could be like just ways of spreading the word or communicating effectively. So like, you know, that could look anything like going out leafleting or, you know, giving talks. I also work part time for a nonprofit called Factory Farming Awareness Coalition, where we train people to give talks to, at schools and at different organizations or community groups to, you know, talks like this for about the benefits of of going veg or eating less meat um, and looking at how factory farming impacts um, our society. So the more that we can become skilled, we kind of have more tools in our activist toolkit. The third area is confidence, believing in yourself, finding your voice and your niche. I know for me, when I first got interested in activism, when I first got obsessed with activism is more accurate, I really didn't know like what, how do I get involved? What do I do? There's no like, you know, there are some handbooks actually, but like it's a very entrepreneurial thing to figure out like where do I plug in? What's needed? What do I most have to offer? I was doing a lot of trial and error and I basically tried as much as I could. I tried, you know, if it didn't involve getting arrested, I've probably done it. 
and um, and I just experienced, you know, I have a, a lot of things that, that I tried out and I figured out like what do I enjoy, what do I seem like I'm good at um, and some of that practice just really helps um, so some of that experience really helps uh, in your practice of kind of figuring out your niche and developing your confidence to really be able to, to step up um, as, a, as an activist. And the fourth area that we focus on at Yale Camp and that I think really makes um, the, the difference between these four areas um, is community, is connecting with others for support and knowing that you're, that you're not alone. Because if you think, oh, I'm the only one who cares about this, you know, some of you, maybe you are the only person you know, or you may be the person sitting next to you. Maybe you're the only pe people that you know who care about this. It can be really hard to feel like you can make a difference. I'm like, am I just kind of blowing in the wind here, right? So connecting with an organization, um, I just pulled up the Sacramento Vegetarian Society Facebook page. So getting connected with like local organizations, go, you know, there's local meetups, even just having one friend to go out and pass leaflets out with you or to, you know, join you in doing any kind of activism that inspires you can be the difference between you giving up and being like, oh, I'm only one person, what difference can I make, kind of going down that like negative spiral to having a buddy and having somebody who supports you, kind of like a workout buddy, you know, you're going to be more likely to go to the gym if you got somebody else who's going to go with you at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning than if you're left to your own devices. Maybe that's just me. So um, connecting with community so that you know that you're not alone and really have that support. So now go clone yourself. Um, we need more people like you. We need more people who care, taking action to make a difference. I mean, the animals are, I think about it, I mean, it's kind of breaks my heart to think of it this way, but it also inspires me that animals are counting on us. Our planet is in crisis. We're in a drought and people don't seem to be concerned about that in a lot of cases and we keep you know doing the things that have caused us to be in the the shape that we're in so we need people like us to be empowered to be taking action to be making a difference so i just really thank you for being people who care um, and for you know spending your saturday here and i thank you for the all the things that i'm sure you've already done to make a difference and i thank you for the future for all the things that you're gonna do. It's really, you know, there's the, the kind of cliched now quote, I've never doubt that a small group of committed activists or committed people can change the world or the only, it's the only thing it ever has. And it's become a cliche, but it's really, you know, individuals taking committed action that does bring about change, that does get veg options in the cafeteria, that make it so that people can now eat foods that they wouldn't have been eating before. Somebody getting a leaflet they have, weren't gonna get, that are now is gonna go change their diet because they now have this information. You cooking somebody dinner and real, having someone realize like, wow, this tastes really good. Like, I could eat this way. Each of those little things you know, cumulatively adds up. And I just thank you for being people who are bringing about the change that we so badly need. So I'll stick around in case anybody has any questions. I know we're, um, you know, this is the last talk of the day. So um, I just, you know, if anybody has any questions or wants to talk with me about anything, um, I have some flyers for our camp if you're interested, if you know a 12 to 17 year old. Um, or, and if you just want to, you know, chat about getting more involved as an activist, I'll stick around here for a few minutes and be at our table um, to, you know, support in any way I can. But thank you guys so much. I really appreciate having this time to talk with you.